just as much as the 140 pound division is intriguing the 154 pound division is just as intriguing just as exciting and just as stacked ladies and gentlemen y'all already know this past weekend we saw sebastian fundura come out with the victory versus tim Zhu. hopefully he gets a rematch you know it was a nasty cut and hopefully you know the boxing gods give tim Zhu another crack at the world title now um we all know that Terrence Bud Crawford, the three division world champion, two division undisputed, has petitioned, has used his super, his WBO super title to petition to get a title shot, an immediate title shot um, with Sebastian Fundura. Um, let's see if that plays out. You know that Earl of Truth Spence was in the ring in the post fight interview, and he wants that title shot. Now, let's see if the politics play. You already know somebody going to probably slit an envelope under the table. You know how boxing works. But anyway, look, um, it's stacked. Erickson Lubin just beat um, uh, Jesus Ramos in the Canelo Alvarez, Jamel Charlo card. Yo, Jamel Charlo, Jamel Charlo never lost the belt. He's, in all actuality, he's currently the moral undisputed 154-pound division. He hasn't fought there in a while. Don't know if he's going to be moving back in the 154-pound division, but we, we have to see what he's going to do next. But Virgil Ortiz, who just recently moved up, Virgil Ortiz has all the skills, the talent, the attributes, the IQ to be the king at 154. Now, of course, he got to prove himself at 154, but I think that skillfully he already proved it himself. And he also proved himself that he is, he is a boogeyman. And also, he's been a victim of the politics in the sport of boxing. Let's not forget 2020 in the welterweight division. See, a lot of people have been talking about that they wanted to see um, Earl Spence. Earl Spence get a crack at the world title versus, um, 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 I'm sorry, Boots Ennis. They were wanted the Boots Ennis to get the world, the, the world title shot from Earl the True Spence. He's been in the IBF route. But also, Virgil Ortiz has been in the WBO route. And he was in position to get a Terrence Book Crawford fight. But the politics of the sport of boxing played him dirty. Let's not forget 2020. Look, March. Where was Virgil Ortiz? Number two. Danny Silva Garcia, number one. As we all know, in that year, Danny Silva Garcia was waiting for a title shot the w in the WBC route to fight Earl the True Spence. Check this out. You know the WBO is very, very um, transparent with the boxing fans. If you go to the WBO, they show you the rankings, the documents, the requests, the mandatory, the orders, everything. That's one thing. That's one good thing about the WBO, that they be transparent. But when it came to virtual tees, now let's look at April. Missing. Let's look at May. Missing. Let's look at June. Missing. Let's look at July. What do we have here? We have Sean Porter as number four. But if you look at March, he was not even top 10. Now let's move on August. Let's move to August 2020. What do we have here? Sean Porter magically got into the number one position. And then guess what? He became a mandatory to Bud Crawford. That should have been Virgil Ortiz. Virgil Ortiz has been a victim of the politics in the sport of boxing. Now he's moving up to the 154 pound division. I believe, and of course he's been, he's been, uh, uh, um, you know, He's been getting set back because of his health, but it looked like he's he's back and ready to go, hungry, strong. And in 154, if I'm looking at the landscape of 154 and the skills and the matchups, look, anybody could get in 154. If you don't come prepared, you're gonna get you're gonna get your L. You know what I'm saying? It's just like I named a few names earlier. We still got Connor Ben um, um, in 154. We do have Josh Kelly in the number in the WBO mandatory position as well. Um the 154 pound division is, is is lit, is lit. So, but I think that Virgil Ortiz, young, hungry, power in both hands. I think that he's the guy that's probably when the smoke's clear is going to, um, he, he's going to be the king in the 154. I believe that Virgil Ortiz could be Tim Zhu, in my opinion. I believe that Virgil Ortiz could be Brian Mendoza. I believe that Virgil Ortiz could be Sebastian Fundura. I know Sebastian Fundura is an enigma. If he does stay disciplined with that type of jab, Sebastian Fundura, you know what I'm saying? Because that's one of the pe that's that's one of the, the major critique I have with Sebastian Fundura, um, because he usually fight, um fight to the leather to the level of the height of his opponent, right? He never established the jab. He never established range. He never really fought with the IQ. Fought with all the hard and all the balls but the IQ was not there but you saw that he identified the range stuck to the game plan stuck to the jab versus Tim Zhu and you know if he if he you know uh, um, build on that 
he's going to be very, very hard to beat, and probably nobody beats him in 154. But I do believe that Virgil Ortiz got the footwork to get inside of Sebastian Van Dover. He got better footwork than Tim Zhu. And I think that a fight with, with, with Virgil Ortiz versus Earl the True Spence in Dallas, I think will blow the roof off. I think they'll have 45K, 50K, 60K in, the, in, in, da in, in Dallas Stadium. Um, Virgil Ortiz versus Bud. I always thought that, that intriguing matchup. You feel me? I thought that as an intriguing matchup. I like the volume punches of Virgil Ortiz, of course. Terrence Bud Crawford, he is the uh, uh, arguably the number one fighter in the sport of boxing. Got all the tricks of the trades. But... How long is Buck Crawford going to be here? How long is Earl Spence going to be here? How long is Erickson Lubin going to be in 154? Um, I think that he's probably going to going to fight a couple of more fights in 154 and move up to the 160. How, uh, um, Danny Suf Garcia, a veteran that's in the 154 pound division as well. Um, how long is he going to be here? Um, we don't know. There's going to be a couple of people that's going to be moving up to the 160 pound division as well. Um, so I just think that Virgil Ortiz is going when the smoke's clear and, and Jamel Charlo. Jamel Charlo's wanting to come back down from two division down, two division up. He was fighting Canelo Alvarez in 168. And I think that people shouldn't push it, Jamel Charlo to a side just because he moved up. He dared to be great. Regardless how you how how you liked how he performed or not, he did move up and challenge the 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 cash cow of the sport of boxing, right? Um but if he comes back down 154 or 100, I think he'll probably come down to 160 and his brother will go up to the 168. Um but let's see. I think when the smoke's clear, and then we don't know how long Jamal Charlo is going to be fighting as well. But I believe in the 154, when the smoke's clear, is going to be Virgil Ortiz. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section. And throughout the months, we're going to be breaking this fight down. Remember, Virgil Ortiz is going to be performing alongside with Jose Ramirez. I believe it's going to be in um, April April 15. It's going to be April 15. No, no, no. Is it, is it April 15? I think so. It's going to be April 15. April 15 or June 15. May 15, April 15, I think it's one of those, but anyway, man, I got it all confused, but my fault, but I, but, but stay, stay tuned to that, to that event. Let me know what y'all think, subscribe to the channel, smash the like button, love you, God bless, and on to the next.